When working with prices, it is important to pay attention to the number of decimals that our price has. That is important because if we try to send an order, for instance to open a pending order, or to place a stop loss or a take profit, we need to pass a price and if that price does not respect the number of digits that the symbol requires, then we will have an error there and the stop loss or the take profit or the pending order will not be placed. So we need to respect the number of digits that a symbol requires. Let's have a look at the market watch. Here we have different markets. Euro USD, as you can see, it has five digits after the decimal point. GBP USD also has five digits after the decimal point. Japanese yen currencies, however, these have three digits after the decimal point. Nasdaq and gold, Nasdaq has two digits and gold has three digits. And then Tesla again, two digits. So if we want to place a stop loss, for instance, for Tesla, we have to pass a price that has only two digits after the decimal point. If not, we will have an error. How do we know how many digits a symbol requires? Well, we can check that here manually in market specification. And these are the digits that this market requires. We can access that information algorithmically using the digits function or the digits predefined variable. Now, let's have a look at how we can normalize a decimal number to a specific number of digits. We can do it in two ways. We can either normalize two digits or normalize using tick size. So let's write this down. Normalization of close price two digits. And here we will do normalization of close price to tick size. Now let's start by the first one, but first let's get rid of this and let's change this to the close of bar one. Now this is very easy. What we have to do here is change the value of the close price to the value of the close price after normalizing that value using the normalizable function. This function will normalize a double to a specific accuracy of digits. So here we pass the double that we want to normalize, which is the, this one, the close variable. And here, with the number of digits. In this case, we can use the predefined variable digits, which store the numbers of digits of the symbol of the current char. And that's it. The second method consists of using the tick size to round the value. So what we have to do first is obtaining the tick size of the symbol. And we do that using the symbol info double function. This function can be used to access information data that is of type double of a symbol. So here we need to put the symbol. We will use the symbol of the current chart. And what information do we want? Well, we want the symbol trade tick size. Symbol trade tick size. There it is. Now, what is the tick size? Well, the tick size is the minimum size of the tick of one symbol. So let's say, for instance, that we are in USD JPY, which has an accuracy of three decimals after the decimal point. So for instance, we could have a value of something like, like this. Well, the tick size for this symbol would be 0 0.001. This is the minimum tick size for USDGPY. Now let's say for instance that we are in Tesla. Tesla has two digits after the decimal point. So we could have a price of something like this. So the tick size for Tesla would be 0 0.01. So this is the tick size. Now, to normalize using the tick size, 
we have to do the following operation so we're declaring a new variable here and what we have to do is use the round function which will round a number to the nearest integer and here we divide the close by the tick size and then multiply that by the tick size what are we doing here well let's check out with an example let's say that we have a close for usdgpy which is 85.521 this would be a price accepted for usdgpy but let's say that this floating number that we receive from the server um, goes something like this now we cannot use this price for anything we have to run that price so what we have to do now is divide that by the tick size which in this case of usdgpy is this one and then this will give us an integer and we will multiply that by the tick size again and this way we will have the price rounded to the tick size now let's check this out with the calculator so let's put our price here we divide this by 0 0.001 now we have price as an integer here and once we have that we round this to nearest integer which is this one 85,521 so let's put that 85,521 and now we have to multiply that to a tick size and that's it that's how we round a number to tick size now these are the two ways of normalizing a value to the number of digits that a specific symbol requires now let's delete these comments we don't need this and let's test this in a script so we will copy this let's go here and let's just say that we have here one point one two 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 three something like this and we want to normalize this to tick size and store that here now let's print this let's compile let's go metatrader and let's use the script so it has been rounded to five digits now let's check the other way around which is using the normalizable function and here we have to put the digits and that's it let's print this value and you can see it is the same now which method to use well in my own experience i had some problems normalizing doubles using the first method the digits so i'd recommend you to stick with the second one with this one tick size at least when you are working to normalize a double to use it then as a stop loss or a take profit if you just want to round some value to do some calculations then it is fine to use normalize double or if you want to normalize that to print it later then it is okay but if you want to round a value to send that value to the server to place a stop loss or a take profit or place a pending order then i would stick with a method that normalizes a value using the tick size